we're ready to get going. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for Salesforce for having us. Thank you guys. If you're looking for the top tips for Salesforce apps on mobile and wearables, you're in the right place. I'm Mitch Creeden, uh, Director of Product Marketing at Aptis. And today, we're going to cover the following items. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is a guy from marketing talking about wearables and mobile? Uh, for four plus years prior to being in marketing, I was working in product management and I was actually working on these apps. So uh, hopefully you can learn from uh, my pain and maybe make that your gain. So today we're going to take a look at uh, the UX uh, and design landscape. We're going to talk about best places to get started and some approaches to think about uh, UX and design as you're getting going on your journey if you're just starting out. We're going to take a look at some current trends that we're seeing right now in 2016 uh, on mobile and wearables. We're going to then take a look at uh, best ways to choose use cases and take a look at some of the challenges that you might face when you're looking at your applications that you, you might need to mobilize. Uh, then we're going to take a look at some mobile app examples. And actually, we're going to show you a bunch of different prototypes. So the first demo is actually going to be just some slides, and we're going to critique the app. And we're going to be as harsh as we can for your gain. And then we're going to take a look at a, a wearable uh, app. And that'll be uh, stop and go, and we'll stop as we're going through the app and, and do some critique there. Then we're going to take a look at uh, some techniques, glanceability, and grouping information, and things that you can uh, think about as you're putting together your functionality inside your app. And then we're going to wrap it up with some uh, lessons learned. And hopefully, uh, after that, I'll be off to the stage, and you can come with your questions if you've got any questions. So Aptis is the intelligent quote to cash uh, market leader. We make all kinds of solutions for, uh, for quote to cash. CPQ, contract, revenue. We have advanced solutions like XAuthor. We have an intelligent agent. We have users globally and you know, a million plus users. And I promise you that this is uh, not just a shameless plug. We're actually going to be talking about this later on. This gets into uh, when you take a look at your applications that you want to mobilize, where do you start? And you know, for us, we had so many applications, it was really uh, a journey to look at our applications, see which ones we wanted to do, and then go from there. So we'll talk about that as we get into selecting use cases. So uh, if you've missed it for some reason, as Donald Trump would say, mobile's huge. So Smart, uh, smartphone sales surpassing PC sales since 2012. Uh, people are touching their phones 10 times an hour. All of you are touching your phones right now quite a bit. So it's, it's amazing how often people are touching their phones. Uh, you're using your phones now for mobile internet more than you use your desktop. And so it's really going to be where your users are. And it's really going to be an experience that you really have to plan out, especially if you're doing enterprise applications where you have some complexities to your application. Um, you know, there's hundreds of thousands, actually millions of apps out there. And if you don't want to be one of the 87% uh, uh, of the apps that get tossed into the delete bin, uh, you really want to think about your approach and follow some of these lessons learned and, and take advantage of the resources that are out there to help you on your journey. And then there's wearables, which we'll talk about later on in detail. But you know, we're seeing a six-fold increase in, in the next three years over a five-year period. So wearables is exploding as well. In the enterprise, hasn't really kind of taken foot yet. But you'll definitely see that a lot more. Everybody's walking in with their watches. And you know, first it started with all the, all the employees wanting their Macs on the network. And then they wanted their own phones on the network. Next thing is going to be their own watches on the network. Um, it's not just about the growth, though. If you take a look at how the, uh, the devices that they're using, you know, it's going to jump up to three devices. Uh, you know, it's going to jump up to uh, sorry, uh, almost seven devices by uh, 2020. So not only are you designing for one device, but for one person, you're going to be designing for multiple devices for these people. And not only that, but they're going to be using different devices at different times during the day. So you're going to want to think about their journey throughout the day and think about how that's going to impact your, your approach. If you have users that are only doing certain things at a certain time of the day, and you know what type of device that they're going to be using, that's obviously going to impact your strategy. So all of these things you want to be thinking about as you go through your strategy. Now, you have to be prepared for one thing if you're going to go uh, start your mobile journey. Uh, a lot of phones. Everybody take out your phone. If you've got a phone, take out your phone. 
All right, a lot of you haven't. All right, now look to the person to the left of you and hand them your phone. Not a lot of movement, is there? People feel very strongly about their phones. If you're going to go into the mobile space, you're going to want to make sure that you learn from everybody else's mistakes and you approach it slowly. People have got their phones everywhere right now. These numbers are only going to increase with wearable watches, right? They're going to have them even more, more so. And so you have to be prepared for people coming back at you with very strong input about the application. Everybody's going to think they're Picasso, so you're going to have a lot of inputs from your organization as well as users, right? So let's get into talking about uh, how to approach mobile design. So first thing is you definitely need to know your audience. You need to get out there and speak to those users. You're going to want to design for specific use cases. You might be a user of the application, but you might not be using the application either in the same way they're using the application or in the same spots they're using the application. You might have field service people that are out in bright light. They might be doing all kinds of different things that it's the same application, but 80% of the company who's going to be using it is going to be doing it a different way than you think you're going to be doing it. And I know a lot of folks here don't have a UX team, and so that you know the UX team is going to obviously uh, think about these things are going through, but if you're out there and you're just starting your journey by yourself and you don't have a UX team, you really want to be thinking about uh, all of these things as you go through here. Uh, you, you definitely need to make it easy to onboard your users, right? First step is getting them in there. Second step is keeping them in there. You need to make it frictionless onboarding. If a, you know, you got to design it for a toddler. If a toddler could pick it up and use it, you're on the right track. I'm not making any comments about salespeople. I'm just saying, you know, make it simple and easy. Uh, make it cool and familiar. You know, Salesforce has done a great job. A lot of you are going to be building on uh, uh, the mobile platform that they have, uh, using Lightning. You have App Builder. There's great resources there to kind of keep, your, keep you on the, on the right track. Um, but there are people that are going to be doing hybrid apps, people that are going to be doing native apps. And so all of these things are going to apply if you are not going to just be going straight with Salesforce, uh, Lightning, and, and mobile platform. Um, you definitely want to think about enabling the users to be productive. Do, do the steps in the fewest amount of steps to get them to the task that they're trying to do. Right? And then the last thing obviously goes to security. Obviously everybody's concerned about that. I think Salesforce you know, handles that for you if you're doing Salesforce One, but it's definitely an added thing you're going to have to think about if you're doing uh, a hybrid or a, a native app. So here's some trends that are happening right now in design. Uh, as everybody knows, you've got a whole bunch of different conversational apps on your phone right now. Six of the top 10 mobile apps right now are, are uh, chat apps, conversational apps. Uh, if you want to increase retention, you, know, you can get uh, very high retention numbers if you have chat enabled within your app. So you want to be thinking about, if you're not using Salesforce One because you've got chatter enabled in there, you want to be thinking about how you're going to integrate with some kind of messaging and chat app to increase your retention. You don't want people jumping out to do those things. As I mentioned, you know, keeping it simple as possible. White space is the new Mona Lisa. You, you need to make sure that your main call to action is clear and evident right up front, and that maybe there's one or two other calls to action, but white space really helps the eye navigate to those steps that they need to that they need to handle right away. And for those of you that are doing enterprise apps that have, are, are very complex and there's a lot of steps, this is going to be a challenge. And we'll talk about that as we go through. The other thing that we're seeing is bigger screens. Everybody's got you know, the iPhone 6 Plus and the, the Samsung tab. And there's a lot of new devices coming out there. So obviously, Salesforce One you have, you know, is scalable. But you, you want to be thinking about all the different devices. And, the way that really plays out is if you take a look at the thumb map of the various devices, you know, some people's hands are bigger than other people's hands, so you're going to have to factor that into your design and think about other ways to put tap targets in navigation if uh, you've got a lot of those. And then, obviously, we're moving away from gestures. People have to kind of learn those pinch-ins and all these other things that you know, really kind of reduce your, your onboarding. And swiping is becoming kind of more of a norm. So think about where you can leverage swipe as much as possible. Some other trends that we're seeing are card layouts. Uh, you know, and swiping goes hand in hand with that. You can have all these various cards that you can swipe. But uh, overlays are a great way. If you have a complex app and you want them, for example, we'll be looking at a shopping cart later, that you have a lot of action items in there. Well, 
you can have additional detail on an overlay, and then you can swipe it away. If you have a lot of complex details, you don't want to continuously have them clicking on overlays and swiping them away. So you really have to use the overlays, but don't overuse them. And then as we start getting into uh, wearables, you'll learn very quickly that typography becomes a main, main factor in what you're doing. All of a sudden, font size and font color and all of those things are going to make a huge difference. So you'll see that uh, as you start designing for your wearables. And we'll take a look at some of those. So I promise you this would actually come back into play. So when we were taking a look at our applications and looking at the types of, uh, the types of applications we had and who was using them, I think most of you can look at this map and think, well, most salespeople are obviously going to need to do quoting. And the field is the most obvious one that jumps out at you. So we had the decision whether we wanted to kind of go broad and try and do a mobile app for all of our applications or whether we wanted to go deep on one application and just put it out there as a test and kind of learn from there. And so we went with CPQ for obvious reasons. And when we decided to put a decent amount of functionality there, but not try and tackle everything, it's a very complex task. Then when you think about wearables, it's the next step down, right? You're not going to be able to do uh, you're not going to be able to do a flow of tasks in a wearable. It's going to be mini apps. It's going to be these mini, uh, these mini actions that you take. And so it's a subset of the functionality that you're going to have in whatever app you're doing. So whatever app you're doing, whether it's sales or whether it's, uh, you know, in our case, it's qu a quote to cash, you have to think about biting off what you can chew and, more importantly, what your user can chew. And we're going to dive into the apps, and we'll take a look at how that plays out. So let's take a look at some mobile examples. And what you're looking at here is on the right-hand side, you're taking a look at some prototypes of our cart, uh, our shopping cart on the right, and the two on the left are the catalog. Think Amazon, right? When you go on Amazon on your mobile and you're shopping for stuff and you put things in your cart, and then you kind of browse through their catalog. So when we first started this, what you first have to realize is, especially if you're going Salesforce One, you're going to be an app inside of an app. Right? So they're going to have these navigational controls at the top. Then you're going to have your navigation controls and your functionality within that. So you need to, you need to one, be conscious of where you put those tap, those tap targets, but also the fact that they're going to be this app inside of an app. For our CPQ app, it's actually got many different solutions tied into it. If you're a salesperson and you're doing quoting, you also need to see some deal guidance. You're going to need to know about approvals that are happening. You're going to need to know what products get recommended as promotions, things like that. So there's all these other additional applications. So that's what this bar here is. At first, we were thinking, well, they're going to need to have access to all these things. And we might as well make it visible to them since they're going to be jumping around. And then as we started adding things in, it started getting more and more complex. We, we started to pull back and say, this is going to get a little too crowded. Plus, we don't have to render that to them right away. And there's different techniques you can use. You can use roll downs where that, that uh, line of those apps there can roll away as they start scrolling to give you a little more screen space. Then you start talking about you have those actions on your pages, right? So whatever your app is, they're going to have these actions for saving or a reprice or whatever. And you have a choice of you can put it fixed at the bottom, which is going to take more real estate, or you can put it on the screen. So it's a choice you, you, you can make. I think uh, what winds up happening is once you start adding all those things in, you're really left with like 60% of the screen, if that, to deal with what they actually want to do, which is take a look at these items in their cart and then do additional things there. So you want to make sure that you can leverage rollaways where you can, and in some cases, take it off of the, the fixed bars and move it inside the page. Uh, next thing that happens here is these are all line items in this, in this particular shopping cart. Well, considering this is an app for a salesperson, not only do they need to see what the product is and what the price is, but they're also going to need to be able to adjust it. They need to see if it's going to require approval or not. They need to see if the customer has this as an installed product or not. So there's all this additional information that they need to see. That starts getting very crowded very quickly. So the right-hand side here, and we were just talking about this, you know, they need to have access to the discounting and all these other fields. So when we went to our second prototype and we started doing lightning, we, we wanted to simplify the line items, but we also thought, well, you're going to need to have a picture because a lot of times you're not going to have enough space for the entire name of the product. So those pictures become really important. You need that space. 
And what becomes most important is the ability for them to see the price, adjust the price. If they're going to want to drill down into the product and get details of other things, you have that as a drill down. We don't need to render all of that, what, you know, installed product and all those things up front. Um, then the things that they do most often, you do want to have on the page. So in this particular case, what they're going to do most often is price it, right? They might leave the list price or they might change the price. But whatever action it is that your customers are going to want to do, you want to have that front and center and make it easy for them without crowding your page. So on the left-hand side, we're taking a look at a, a catalog. And again, you know, this, this applies across the board, whatever your app is, right, in terms of spacing and UX and design. Um, we had you know, the little uh, thumbnail for their profile, a little header at the top. Well, they know who they are, and they know, they know where they are. Uh, what becomes more important is, as they're picking things up from the catalog, is they need to know what's in their shopping cart, right? And they need actually a way to get to the navigational menu. So you can see here on the right, you have the little mini shopping cart. They can click down, see it, just like on Amazon. On the left, we actually swap that out with a navigation control. And navigation is probably, if you have a complex app, one of the most important things, especially if you have these additional apps kind of buried within it, right? Because they can get lost along the way here. So uh, we simplified the header as well. So you want to think about constantly simplifying things without taking away the, you know, the one or two most important key pieces of information. Then when you take a look at the, the line items or the items in the catalog, well, we wanted an easy way for them to put things in the shopping cart, but then we needed to make it obvious for them you know, how they get into the additional options. Well, I think by this point, everybody knows that you just drill down in on an item. So we were able to get rid of the, you know, the drill downs, put a picture in there, and also create a little more space with font. So you can use font you know, to some degree to gain a little space. So you want to think about that as well. So that is kind of a, a quick tour of our prototypes and some of the lessons that we, we learned and we talked with other folks as well. We talked with our customers, we gave them input, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So the next thing is wearables. So we talked about it before. If you think about where iPads were in 2010 to where they were last year, wearables is going to grow at that pace and more. So if you're not thinking about wearables right now, you probably should be for your enterprise pretty soon. I'm sure they're already walking into the office asking you about it. Um, obviously, you know, the most, the most prevalent uh, wearable items right now are sports and fitness things, but that'll change as things start happening in the enterprise for approvals for your various tasks that you have to do and other micro tasks that people can do with their uh, phone. Uh, and, you know, job satisfaction and productivity is obviously the, the reason why you're going to go there. But, you know, with the f handing the phone to your neighbor example, you want to be careful if you're going to go there. So let's talk quickly about some differences between mobile and wearables. It used to be that the wearable, the watch, was an extension of your phone. Now they're starting to have watches that kind of can operate without that. But you, you want to think that they're usually going to have those two paired. You're not going to have to have everything you have or access to the same types of actions that you do on your phone. They're going to have them there. You have to think about what are the most common things you're going to want to do on a phone. Uh, it's kind of like a, a revisit of the early days of mobile where everybody was trying to stuff, uh, you know, 30 pounds of functionality into a 10-pound bag, right? It just, it doesn't work. You get going on it and then you realize you just pull stuff out. Wearables even more so. We'll talk about that when we get into design, but thankfully there's more guardrails there. There's a lot of resources out there that you can leverage for wearables. It's somewhat easier to some degree than doing a mobile thing because there's so much guidance and there's only so much you can do with the space. You'll find it actually easier to develop your wearables than you did for your mobile apps. Definitely set realistic time expectations. Uh, mobile apps are going to take months sometimes, depending if you're building just that, you know, with App Builder. Um, a wearable, you can put together quite quickly, but you definitely don't want to do too much on your first try, and we'll talk about that in Lessons Learned. The other main, you know, the biggest difference is what people are going to do with them. People are going to look at their watch for five, ten seconds at a time, right? They're going to be at a bus stop. They're going to do a quick approval on something. They're going to look at a notification. It's short time bursts that they're using their, their watches for. They're not going to sit on their watch for 10, 20, 30 minutes like they do on a phone. So those two main factors of space and time really should dictate what you want to do with your app on a, on a wearable. And then there's certain things you can do on a wearable that you can't do on a phone and vice versa. For example, on a wearable, they have glances where you can take a little peek into an application, the most common thing, uh, so that users don't have to go into the application to see that thing that you want to present to them. Can't do that on the phone. So you definitely want to leverage each one to do the things that they're, they're good at. 
So, wearable demo. So, now they don't have the projector here for putting my watch here. So, what we have here is a, a video. And what we'll do is we'll just play it and we'll stop it as we go along. So, um, the first thing you're going to want to think about is you can see there, actually, let me play a little more. Um, we happen to have a logo as uh, our name. Don't recommend putting your name necessarily on the icon. When it gets small in the list, you're not going to see it anyways. You want to think about something like an icon or something that's going to match up with your brand. But that's the first thing you want to think about is uh, how small everything's going to be. So if you've got a logo like that, like ours, you want to change that. So now you're going to come into the app. And for us, this is an approvals, uh, an approvals application. Similar to you know, Salesforce approvals, they're approving line items on quotes or they're approving quotes. And so what you'll see first are the line items that they have to pr approve in their queue. You'll notice that, one, we've got the quote number in there. It's not really going to make, sometimes that's really important, but they're not going to know what that is from looking at that. So you need to put something that's a unique identifier that they'll know exactly what that line item is right away. Now, obviously, they're going to drill down into it, but you have to be able to uh, render that to them easily. Then you'll see the, the date format. You want to have something that is, that is uh, useful to them, right? In this particular case, they're going to want to do the approvals that have been outstanding the longest. So we're telling them how long it's been since, since uh, the approval was submitted. But in your app, it might be they need to know the actual time, or it might be some other factor that is the most important thing that drives their queue. So you want to present that so they don't have to drill into each item. right? And then you can see, too, that we're using color on the items. And you see that next even better on the drill down. So now we've drilled down into one of those line items. And you'll see that what we've done is use color to call out what are the most important thing, you know, what are the items that we're pointing out to these folks, right? So you're going to have to get pretty creative with space and color. And we've stripped out a lot of, of details in here about the, the line item approval. So they can just focus on the most important thing. What's the product? What's the price? What did they discount it? And you know, what's the information I need to consider my approval? The other thing that we've done here is you'll see these two, you'll notice there's two buttons at the bottom there underneath the 280. There's multiple pages that are loaded. So what you can do and what you should do is load other additional information. We'll talk about what we did in a minute in the background so that your users aren't waiting for those pages once they get there, right? That's going to load in the background and they're not even going to know it's loading until they go there and then they'll realize it. It's, you know, they're not waiting for the application. So the, the other thing is you have a choice of where to put your actions. So if they went through and they decided, OK, they got to the bottom of the page, we have approve, reject, all those. We put those actions on the page. There's another way to get those actions by click and hold. You can choose to do both or one or the other. We put them on the page because you might want to color code them to give them some guidance in terms of what's, you know, what you want to be careful about. The other thing you want to think about is if they're going to take an action, you want to seed them with some information so that they don't ha they're not going to be able to text you know, or type anything there. So if they're going to approve or deny something, put the most common, action, uh, the most, uh, common replies to these things, right? Whether it was a, you know, exec said no or need more info, but essentially you want to seed them the, the replies for that. So the other thing that we did and we talked about before is we integrated with Wave. So there might be other applications that you might want to pull in. If somebody's going to do discount approvals, well, it would be helpful for them to know what other people are doing. So we're using our approvals intelligence to then recommend and let them know, hey, this is what everybody else did. So now they're giving them some guidance. So we went ahead, we loaded that in the background, and it's a right place to present that information to them. I don't, you know, it, it is a little complex having these multiple pages, and you have to really think about what integrations you want to do. But that's something that you can leverage and uh, makes a big difference to your users. And then at the end, this is the last part where you can do those uh, additional actions. So that's what we did with um, mobile, uh, sorry, with wearables. And let me get back to our presentation here. And so now let's talk about um, some do's and don'ts. So remember, Set your, set your top three goals. And by goals, I mean use cases. It's really going to be around what are the most common things that you want your users to do. You want to focus on your function first. Figure out what you, what you need them to do, and then prototype and build those things. 
and then worry about how it looks, right? And obviously with Salesforce One, you don't have to worry about too much of that, but don't, don't be too concerned at first with how it looks. You also want to make sure you got the right size and location for the tap targets. We saw on the app that we saw in the, in the um, shopping cart, it can get crowded up there if you've got a lot of actions in your enterprise app. Um, you definitely want to leverage caching and lazy loading like we talked about with Wave, uh, where they don't have to wait for stuff. And you also want to allow for mistake recovery. If you notice, there was a cancel in the top for wearables. In wearables, navigation's a tricky thing. You always want to have them have a way to kind of get back out of what they were doing. Same thing on the mobile as well, right? You want to make sure that your navigation is solid, but particularly on a wearable. Don't go big first. So here's the biggest don't. Pick a little piece that you can, you know, get your teeth, you know, sink your teeth into it first and, and get your feet wet, and then you can go on to other parts of your application. Uh, don't try and overcomplicate your feature set. It's going to be complicated enough, right? Don't forget the state that you're in. If they're in a quoting tool, uh, a quoting part of your application, then they have to go down into an approvals app part of the application and so forth and so forth. They might get lost along the trail. So you always want to keep where the user is in their journey in mind, right? Um, don't keep them waiting. You can do that with lazy loading and caching. And don't overuse your push notifications. As I mentioned before, it's kind of nice for wearables because there is so much out there. Uh, Salesforce has a lot out there. I've provided these links in here. Uh, you can download this PowerPoint, get these links, and there's additional information in the notes. Uh, Apple has a lot of iOS human interface guidelines as well as other guidelines posted. And again, because you're dealing with such a limited space and they're so stringent about their guidelines, you're really going to find that you don't have a lot of rope to really hang yourself that much with. So wearables definitely is a little bit uh, easier, especially with all these resources. So leverage those resources. So some final things to think about. Your navigation consistency and your style. If you're developing lightning components or you're developing any, you know, pieces of your application, you want them to fit together. You want them to look and navigate and kind of feel unified when you put them all together. So whether you're using Lightning and building your app that way, or whether you're building your own native app, you want to make sure that your nav is consistent all the way through. And you also want to make sure that the style is consistent all the way through, especially if you're doing multiple applications, right? So same thing would apply for us with CPQ and contract management and all these other applications that we do. Um, remember, your, your app is, if you're doing Salesforce One, is going to be an app inside of an app, so just always keep that in mind. Uh, don't just build it because it's there. Find out if your users need it. The engineers will have plenty of time to work on other stuff, so if it's needed, you can go ahead and build it. Uh, if you are going to be building hybrid or uh, native, you have all these you know, technology choices you have to make, and you want to make sure you choose the right one for the scenario that you're trying to build, right? It might not just be all about uh, you know, getting an app builder and building a Salesforce One Lightning thing. Test using real data. Uh, we'll leave the uh, company uh, unmentioned, but they went ahead and tested their data with their standard dummy data. And then when they loaded other product catalogs, they realized, oh, the product names are much longer. Nothing fits. So you want to test using real data and test multiple ones. And uh, don't worry, we fixed it. <laughs> um, Leverage existing pieces, right? You've got Wave, you've got Lightning, you've got a lot of different pieces that you can build together like we did with wearables. We had our approvals app, but we also then built in some Wave integration with that. So there's a lot of things that you can uh, build into to add additional value to whatever it is, uh, whatever the app is that you're building, it can bring additional value to. So uh, some final things. Thank you, guys. I just want to remind everybody there's the green team in the back there, they're hanging out these luggage tags. If you have one of these luggage tags, you can get into our super session on Thursday at 3 o'clock. And that will make you eligible to win our trip around the world, $25,000 trip. And finally, you can come visit us with those tags at these other green zones we have. Drop by our booth. Thank you very much. And I'll be at the side of stage if anybody has any questions.